your uh, website puts it very clearly. Why does the world need another computer? Answer that question. What's your business model? Yeah, so I think before the business model, the basically the way to look at it is like if you go to your iPhone today, you have a dozen of apps that you can find to even get food delivered at your home. But if you go to some large bank or uh, insurance company, they don't have an app store where they can find an app for, let's say, income verification or claim processing. And the question is, why is that? Like, why there doesn't exist any? And then we try to answer that question, like, what is missing? What, what does the world need from that perspective? And then we looked at what are the key building blocks and tools that needed to be built. And that's what Instabase is. It's basically a platform that gives you a number of tools and building blocks that businesses can use to build new applications that helps them automate their business. And the business model, how do you make money? So we sell to large financial institutions. So currently, like more than 50% of the top 10 financial institutions in the U.S. are our customers. Sarah, talk to me. Amid all the scrutiny of the public markets, how important is it to at least be able to see the path to profitability? Is it five years? Is it 10 years? What is that timeline? The key is to invest in a company with a great business model. Um, and the great thing about what Anant and his team have built at Instabase is that it's really a rare opportunity to build a generation-defining business. So they are enabling humans to do their best work. So if you think what Apple did for people in their consumer lives by giving them an iPhone where they could get everything on demand, that's what Instabase is going to do in the enterprise through their products by enabling banks, healthcare companies, insurance companies to build kind of all the processes that they need to do their work to deliver more value to customers. So uh, to answer your question, we really do want to have business models that work today and will work in the future. The great thing about Instabase is we talk to a number of customers who are already paying millions of dollars for the product with a long line of others that wanted to do so. And the company is cash flow positive today. That could change if they invest in growth, but those are certainly fundamentals that we feel good about today and in the future. Has the pressure to see that path within a certain time frame increased as of late? I would, I would say we focus on it today and in the future. So I think certainly in a rich valuation environment, which we are definitely in, I mean, value multiples are at historic highs. You want to invest in companies where the potential is very large. You want to invest in outlier businesses um, that really can deliver that return even at those high valuations. So she mentioned valuations, a billion dollars. What was the most recent funding round going to be used for? So mostly we'll spend that money to scale our go-to-market function so that we can scale for different industries. So currently, most of our customers come from banking and insurance, but going into logistics and uh, government and healthcare, and also, of course, scaling our R&D efforts so that we can build the app store and scale the number of apps that are present for different kinds of industries. And how careful do you have to be that growth at any cost is not acceptable in this market environment? So we have had really good business model so far, and we have been cash flow neutral or positive so far. We haven't spent any money that we had raised from Series A so far. And as long as we are disciplined and we continue to be disciplined, I think we can, we can grow without uh, getting into trouble. And Sarah, you talked about the big valuations. As you take a look at your IRR, how do you make sure that you are finding good businesses, but also being aware that there is a lot of cash chasing too few good businesses? That's absolutely right. So what I, the way that I think about it is you need to be in a huge market opportunity that can sustain an even larger company. So even if you're entering at what is high valuation, if there's an enormous market opportunity, you could still generate a 10x, 20x, hopefully 100x return uh, at these levels of entry valuation. You know, we talk a lot about unicorns here in San Francisco, and I wonder, is reaching that $1 billion valuation exciting, or does that increase the pressure and the scrutiny? And that's something that up until now you've tried to stay away from. We try to be basically execute the company as what is necessary for us to execute. So we look at what our growth plans were and what is needed for those growth plans, and we'll continue to do the same way. So a billion dollar valuation or the money that we raise doesn't significantly change anything. And Sarah, I pose the same question to you. Is it helpful or hurtful? I think you know it will enable them to attract the best talent in the world, and that's what attracted us to the business in the first place. And I think given the demand that we were seeing, it will enable them to kind of execute against that more quickly and maybe expand into other industries. So I think it just enables us to accelerate um, what Anand and the team were already planning. What is the biggest risk in the market right now? We talked about valuation. Is it competition from other cash, other investors? What do you see as the biggest risk in the market? 
So this may hark back to my previous life uh, as an economist, but I do think that there are macro risks, um, and I think that's you know the valuation environment has been what it has been for uh, nine years. Um, so what's going to happen, kind of more broadly? Are we looking at tougher times, and how will that impact technology? It could be different this time because people have raised much larger funds, and so they have a lot of kind of dry powder chasing deals. So it could there could be a lag, uh, but I'd say that's the biggest risk. How much extra scrutiny have you gotten in the past six months over corporate governance, for example? Uh, we have started having board meetings more regularly, yeah. but apart from that, nothing much. I mean, from the perspective, we try to be transparent and uh, just give all the details to the board and keep them aware of uh, all the progress and all the updates that are necessary. And but did those pressures increase given the focus on WeWork's corporate governance and then in response you figured out that you needed to have more board meetings? No, I don't think it had anything to do with any external situations. Uh, every company runs the quarterly board meetings and that's just a, st a standard procedure, I think.